Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Forum Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Tuesday morning devotion. And as we do so, we turn once more to Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. And today we're going to be reading the morning section from Isaiah 14.10. And we give thanks again for the word of the Lord and for the faithful saints who have taught us much about our faith. So let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are our God and we are your people. And your covenant promises are fresh every day. As we look out unto the cold morning, we are reminded that you are faithful in the cold, in the heat, in the sun, in the clouds. Regardless of what the outward situation might look like, we are forever warm in our heart because we know that you are sovereign over all things and that what uh, may seem like an eternity to us is but a day unto you. And we rejoice in your goodness unto us, despite darkness, despite all of the evil that we see. We know that your glory shines through and gives us peace. And God, we pray as we uh, face trials today, as we look unto the heavens, as we uh, go through any number of things, that we might always return back unto you to rejoice, to worship, to praise, and be reminded that we are the sons and daughters of the living God. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn again to Isaiah 14.10. You have become like us. What must be the apostate professor's doom when his naked soul appears before God? How will this apostate bear to hear that voice telling him, that he is forever banished to hell and that he will not be a recipient of mercy. Depart from me, you cursed, you who have rejected knowledge, and I reject you, the Lord will say to them. The question we ask is, what will be this wretch's shame? At the last great day when before the assembled crowds, the apostate shall be unmasked. See the profane and sinners who never profess faith lifting up themselves up from their beds of fire to point at him and say, There he is, says one. Will he preach the gospel in hell? There he is, says another. He rebuked me for cursing, and he was a hypocrite himself. Aha, says another, here comes a psalm-singing Methodist, one who is always at his meeting. He is the man who boasted of his being sure of eternal life, and yet here he is. No greater eagerness will ever be seen among satanic tormentors than in that day when devils drag the hypocrite's soul down to perdition. And to think uh, that this might be too harsh, we are reminded that Bunyan pictures this with massive but awful grandeur of poetry when he speaks of the back way to hell. Seven devils bound the wretch with nine cords and dragged him from the road to heaven in which he had professed to walk and thrust him through the back door into hell. So what, again, are we to take uh, from this example of the apostate professor? Again, we speak there not of one who teaches at a college, but one who professes Christ, one who was in his heart no better than an unbeliever. We're to watch out ourselves for this back door to hell. We are to examine ourselves to see whether we are true professors. As we hear Paul say in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Pay attention, dear believer, to your condition and see whether you are in Christ or not. We are reminded that it is the easiest thing in the world to give high marks when grading your own paper. Be honest and be fair. Be gracious to all, but be rigorous to yourself. 
Remember, if you're not building on the rock, your house will collapse. May the Lord give you sincerity, constancy, and firmness, and in no day, however evil, may you be led to turn aside. Now these words from Spurgeon uh, may seem pretty harsh. They may seem as if no one can be a Christian according to this standard. But what Spurgeon tells us today is very important for our daily walk with Christ. We need to be examining ourselves and asking the simple question, are we resting in the power of the gospel or are we resting in the power of our own works? And an easy way to tell that difference is by asking our heart why it is that we are doing what we are doing. Are we seeking the Lord's glory or our own? Or are we using Jesus as a shield to push our way into fleshly blessing? Now, it's not fun, usually, to examine ourselves in this way, but it is a necessary thing to do. Because by this examination, we can find those sores, those places where the devil is making inroads. And we can then close those gates, we can fix those fences, and be rest assured that he cannot attack us in that direction anymore. So brothers and sisters, be serious about your walk. Be serious about especially where you know that you are weak, where you need to put up a double bulwark. But again, make sure that this double bulwark that you have placed is made with the rock, hewn without the hands of men, and not a mud fortress washed away in the first rain. Make use of the means of grace. Make use of what God has provided, and you will find that they are more than sufficient for this. And you will see that this work is sweet as honey and full of peace and comfort as we grow more and more secure in Christ, not in ourselves, but in the rock of our salvation. May the Lord bless you today. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Be blessed and take care.